Mr. President, it's that time of the week where I get to come down and talk about an Alaskan, this time a couple Alaskans who are doing great things for their community, our state, sometimes our country. It's what we call the Alaskan of the week, Alaskans of the week. One of the things I enjoy a lot, one of my favorite parts of the job, I know the presiding officer loves these speeches too, and when we had pages, they really loved it. We'll get them back here soon, hopefully. But in all seriousness, of course, our country is facing very, very challenging times. And we've been tested as a nation, as a state, so many levels. But, you know, Mr. President, if you read the newspaper, you'd think that uh, there's nothing going right. But I will tell you one thing that I certainly see in my state, and I was home for three weeks last week, uh, last three weeks, is this. Empathy, kindness, understanding, people working together, coming together. That's the big story. And I think we've got to keep an eye on that. People putting aside their own interests to help their neighbors, to help the elderly, our elders, our seniors. People partaking in conversations about the soul of our nation, sometimes uncomfortable conversations, but I think overall constructive, important conversations and trying to help each other to make our communities better, stronger, and make our country better and stronger as we struggle through an unprecedented pandemic. I certainly see that across my state, Mr. President. I'm sure you see that in yours. Really the best of America. It's important to remember that. And um, Mr. President, one of the reasons I love doing this Alaskan of the Week speech is because we get to highlight this, not just for people in Alaska, but for the country, people who are working hard for each other, maybe not getting the recognition that they deserve, but still doing really important work. So this week, I'm going to honor five very fine young Alaskans, young heroes, who because of their bravery and instincts and courage, very well likely saved lives. So there are Alaskans of the week. But before I talk about them, I always like to give an update what's going on back home. Uh, the weather's been glorious in many areas. A lot of sun, midnight sun, of course. Even more sun than Florida right now at this time, Mr. President. Salmon are choking our rivers. I was out in Knack Knack, uh, Bristol Bay region huge uh, sockeye salmon run happening right now, epic, which is great. Struggling in other parts of the state. Fire season is also upon us. This is something we have every year. I used to be the commissioner of natural resources, in charge of our division of forestry. These brave men and women who fight fires in Alaska, fight fires all over the country really. Sometimes we have really challenging fire seasons. Last summer was a really challenging one for us. Um, firefighters across the country came and helped Alaska with our challenges. They happen primarily lightning strikes, by the way. Thousands in a day you'll get in Alaska. Just one day, thousands. But so far, uh, the season, fire season in Alaska, knock on wood, uh, this summer has not been nearly as intense as last summer. But our firefighters are still always out there, still taking on big, huge fires. You don't read about them in the paper in the lower 48. Dangerous work, very dangerous work. And that brings me to the story of our Alaskans of the week. Dylan Nicholson, who is 13 years old, Trevor Morgan and Mason Dahlman, both 17 years old, A.J. Simeon, who is 19 and Sky Morgan, who is 18. On the afternoon uh, of May, 8, May 28th, so two months ago, these five young men from Antioch, Alaska, a village of about 500 people that sits roughly 300 miles west of Anchorage, my hometown, were driving in a truck and on a four-wheeler near a gravel pit area a few miles away from their village. On the way back home, they passed a lake by the road and saw a yellow airplane, small airplane, that was in the 
in the lake. Obviously, it had just crashed. Inside the plane were three emergency firefighters and a pilot. They had been on their way to the Kenai Peninsula, south of Anchorage, to support firefighters there. This is late May. To the boys, these young men, the plane seemed to materialize out of thin air. One of them, Trevor Morgan, is quoting it as saying, I was like, dang, man, that wasn't there 30 seconds ago, and now there's a plane in the lake. When they heard the shouting coming from the plane and people emerging, the young men sprung into action. 13-year-old Dylan called his aunt, who works at the Alaska State Trooper Dispatch Office. Then, Mr. President, they did something very brave. They jumped into the freezing water. Now remember, this is May in Alaska. That lake was probably frozen over just a couple months earlier. Helping two of the passengers out through the mud and onto the shore. They loaded them into a truck and drove them to a nearby clinic. Two of the other passengers, however, were still in the plane, stuck in the plane, in the water, because they were too badly injured to leave the plane. So Mason Dahlman, 17 years old, waded out into the water where he stayed with them to make sure they could hang on until help arrived. Now remember, this is freezing water. By the way, it was thick with diesel oil coming from the engine, so highly dangerous if somehow this was going to ignite. And he was in there keeping them comforted for about 30 minutes. He didn't leave their side. One passenger who was badly injured grabbed onto Mason and said, Mason said, don't worry, I am not going to leave you. Eventually, 30 minutes in the freezing cold water, full of diesel, first responders came and helped get the men out of the plane and transported them to a clinic, then a hospital. Two of them suffered severe injuries. But, Mr. President, fortunately, all of them are recovering. And they're recovering thanks to these five young men, boys, young men and boys, who spotted the plane in the first place, which wasn't a given since it was miles away from town, and then they reacted and got them help. We are very fortunate, said Alaska State Forest Director Chris Mache, who I know very well. You, could have, you couldn't have asked for a better emergency response in this rural community from these young people, he said. Antioch City Council member David Matson arrived at the crash scene when the rescue was going on. He calls the action of these young men heroic. Quote, being a hero means going above and beyond for others, putting others before yourself. And that's what these boys did at such a young age, at such a quick reaction time. It's so inspiring. That's what Councilman Matson said. He had lived in other cities across the country, but he gives credit to the way these boys were raised and the values of Antioch. Quote, we are a big family out here, he said. Doesn't matter what you look like or who you are or what you do, you're a fellow citizen, and if you need help, people in this part of Alaska and America jump in and help others, unquote. So, Mr. President, these are just a few stellar examples of young Americans, young Alaskans, our next generation, who are out there doing their part, doing their part to help us during these challenging times. With young men and women like these all across our nation, all across my state, we know we're going to continue to thrive as a country, as Americans, as Alaskans, no matter what. We know it. So to Dylan, Trevor, Mason, AJ, and Sky, and your families, thank you for being an inspiration to us all. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for jumping in a cold lake to save lives. Thank you for your heroism. 
And thank you for stepping up when your community and people in need really needed you without asking any questions, without hesitating. And congratulations on being our Alaskans of the week.